Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. I'm curious about. I'm curious about. I'm curious about. I'm curious about. I'm curious about building open, authentic, loving relationship. I'm curious about jealousy. I'm curious about polyamory. Does it just mean that you're fucking all the time? How can I tell my parents that my partner is already married? I'm curious about... How do you know when you're too busy to have another relationship? I'm curious about dominant and subordinate relationships. I'm curious about sexual health. How can relationships can evolve relationships with people evolve as they grow and change? Grow and, change. and I actually was not expecting him to be cute at all. <laughs> apparently I was not, I did not have the right pictures on my Yeah, phone. exactly. You needed the photo shoot, apparently. Yes. Exactly. Welcome to the Curious Folks Podcast. For those challenging the status quo in love, sex, and relationships, my name is Effie Blue. And I'm Jacqueline Misla. And today we're introducing Foxtails, stories of lives that challenge the status quo. We're going back to our roots with this episode. Curious Fox started in Brooklyn basements with regular people courageously sharing personal stories of going against the grain in love and connection. The work was born out of a desire for people to both see themselves in other people's experiences and see a possibility that they may not have ever imagined. We're going to continue to explore topics with experts and with each other to bring you knowledge, wisdom, advice, and tips. And sometimes we just want to bring you stories of people who've designed unapologetic lives. So today, we want to bring you a tale of a girl. I am Mistress Lucy Sweetkill. I am a professional dominatrix and BDSM life coach in New York City. Who meets a boy? I'm Nick. I'm Lucy's partner. Go by he, him. Together, they embark on a relationship against all odds. Lucy, a sex worker extraordinaire. And Nick, a regular dude. Meet where the rest of us meet these days. We actually met on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> How all love stories start. <laughs> uh-huh. They're here to tell us their story. I hate dating. And I had been <laughs> single for a very long time by choice because I was kind of figuring out, trying to figure out a lot of my shit and my shit with my past with trauma and relationships and bad habits in relationships and bad choices in relationships, right? I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to cleanse whatever is going on, right? So I was actually single for about 10 years, you know, kind of dated here and there, but really like wasn't looking for anything. A good friend of mine, he was like, oh, you should get back on Tinder if you feel like dating, it's kind of happening again. And I'm like, oh, do I want to do that? Right? Because I had been like two years since I had gone on a dating site. And I was like, "Uh, maybe it'll be fun. And so I went back on Tinder. It had been a really long time. And I was at a place in my life where I was, I'd been doing domination work for a good while. And I was at a place where I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to say exactly what I do. Cause I used to be like, Oh, do I put it on there? Do I not? Do I, when do I tell people what I do? Do I wait for the first date, the fifth date? Like I've done every iteration of it. Like it went from fifth date to third date to like first date (laughs) over the years. And then this time I was like, fuck it. You know, I'm tired of this. So I put on there that I was a professional dominatrix. But all these other things too, it was a very small portion of my profile. I actually think I still, oh, I do. I do have it. So I'm going to read it. It says, Lucy at the time, 32, dominatrix at my own damn company, unconventional, self-confident, shoe-loving, ghetto goth weirdo. I'm complex but low-key, laugh at my own jokes, and judgmental in the good ways. Mother to a black goth bunny named Moose and ringleader of Food Club, a private club consisting of five members, which are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> By Coastal, NYC and SF, Vietnamese dominatrix, educating, demystifying and normalizing BDSM, which basically means it's better to ask me a question than assume you know who I am, what I do and what I like. Uh, smiling is overrated in photos. That was my 
That was my profile. <laughs> I am swiping right. Right? <laughs> yeah, amazing. right? Of course you're swiping right. And what are you doing? Pictures, and then there's pictures with that too. Like, oh. I know. The pictures. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I'm going to put it all out there. Let me just... You know, and funny enough, he was the last person that I interacted with because I have this tendency, like if I'm going to be on a dating site, like I'm just going to do it. I'm going to have like one or two dates a day for like a few weeks and then I'm going to get off because I just like dive into it and then I'm like, oh, I'm done. Right. Mm -hmm. So he was the last person that I spoke to on Tinder before Tinder actually shut down my account because they don't like people. And this is a political thing that people should know about. They do not like people who are sex workers, even though I wasn't looking for clients. I wasn't doing sex work. I just felt it was important. I mean, you guys heard my profile. It was important for me to like say what I do because I just was tired of people finding out what I do and that being like this big contention between Mm -hmm. dating and our relationship. I was just like, you know what? You either are okay with this or you're not. And so let me just put it out there. But yeah, they deleted my account. Mm -hmm. So he was the last person I talked to on it. And Nick, why did you swipe? Oh my God. So many reasons. Yeah. So for myself, there's a point in my life where, you know, I was dating, I had some long-term relationships, some short-term relationships. And I got to the point, I'm a little bit older than Lucy, where I just kind of was reflection, a lot of reflection, a lot of reflecting back, really understanding that I was feeling these pressures of like this heteronormative society of like getting married, having kids and and just really kind of taking that all in and try to understand, like, is that what I want? <laughs> you know, like, what, what is what else is out there? You know, maybe there's not one person that could fulfill all those needs. What does that look like? What are some of these non-traditional relationships that might make sense for me? Being as in my past, having like very, very traditional heteronormative relationships, I was like, there must be more out there. And I'm really open to like understanding and, and um, exploring those options. And so when I was uh, swiping, it was... Somebody who was so candid, so upfront, so beautiful, and just had all this essence of like the humor, the the foodie, just like the strong, independent weirdo. business owner, weirdo. Um, I was like, yeah, I'm obviously going to swipe right on that. And then, uh, you know, leading up to to that date too, as Lucy was saying, I was I was the only, I was the last person she was going to be meeting before she was shut down, and <laughs> she gave me a very finite window. It was a, a lunchtime date. <laughs> it was like 11.30 noon, somewhere around there. And uh, my office at the time was really closed, but my meeting was running a little late. I was like, there's no way I don't want to be late to this little lunch date. Um, I don't want to put the wrong first impression forward. So I like ran after my meeting. It was a couple blocks away. Uh, I walk in and, and Lucy was there in a Wednesday Adam shirt. And I was like, oh, heart. <laughs> and then we just hit it off. I was like, we just fell into the conversation. And it was, it was just really nice. Well, it was also funny because I didn't realize this either, but he was like, you didn't take off your sunglasses at all during that day. it was very it was very mysterious because you were just coming back from a photo shoot yeah so. like a really early thing and i like it was so early to have this much makeup on and i was and i didn't really have time to take anything off and i actually was not expecting him to be cute at all <laughs> Apparently, I was not. I did not have the right pictures on my. Yeah, phone. exactly. You needed the photo shoot. Apparently, yes. Exactly. He did not have the best photos, and we'll kind of go into that. And I'm so I was just kind of like, I didn't think he was going to be very cute or anything. And then he like came in. I was like, whoa, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> I was like, tall, handsome man. And I was like, and I was like, okay. And I guess I just didn't take off my sunglasses. And he was like okay, she's just not going to take off her sunglasses. It, it, it was like a level of mystery throughout yeah. lunch. And I was yeah. like, I can't really get past this, but I kind of I kind of like it. <laughs> and then we actually end up having a second date that same day. Oh. So I walked him back to his office and I said, hey, what are you doing tonight? And he was like, having dinner with you. And I was like, cool. So then we actually ended up having an official date that night. Mm -hmm. which was like really solidified it. But 
it was kind of funny because I was clear with him that at the time I was more, you know, I have a more poly lifestyle. And, you know, if this is not something that you really know about, we can talk. And that was very new to Nick. And I was actually dating someone at the same time I was dating him named Nick. (laughs) Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my friends had, they were like, okay, two Nicks. Like, how are we supposed to? (laughs) We had nicknames. But yeah, that second, that second date that night was, it was when she walked in, it was the first time I really saw her eyes and like, it was like a very magical moment, but yeah, like kind of this being poly and this, this kind of new, you know, non-traditional relationship. It was, I was very open to exploring that. And just, I think, you know, even looking back, I, I know that having that up front really solidified our foundation, even though it was new to me, like we formed such a strong bond as friends like hearing about this other Nick, I was there for her in terms of like, if she wanted a vent or talk or whatever. And then she actually helped me uh, with my Tinder profile. <laughs> and she, she I helped, redid it. She redid it. Yeah, there's, there's a couple a couple nice taglines she, she threw in there that was really, really helpful. Some better pictures and things like that. So it really helped build that foundation. And um, it, was, it was really incredible. And it was obviously all new to me. So. Yeah. And it was it in those initial conversations where you talked more about your work or, or were you thinking, Lucy, over time, I'll get into those details. I want to just make sure that we have connection and we're going to be building something. No, we, I talked about it right away because I've, I had already dealt with issues with dating and my, what I do. I mean, I have so many hilarious, but horror stories at the time, but hilarious now. So I'd been through that, but I've also had people I dated who are still really good friends who are, were just like, didn't care, you know, just were like, cool, whatever. And it was not a big deal. So I, I knew that, yeah, it could be a challenge, but I also knew that there were people out there who didn't really care. And those moments with different people helped me kind of be more open about it, which is what kind of was my my last iteration of being on dating sites of just being really out there and being very open. And so I have learned from a lot of that and around like, you know what, this is not only what I do, this is something that's really meaningful to me. And I just want to be really transparent and also be very open to answer any questions. And so interesting enough, when I was dating the two Nicks, Mm -hmm. they were both two very different outcomes in how they saw my work. Mm -hmm. So the other Nick who we'll call him Chef Nick because that was his nickname. Chef Nick like was in that very, in the boat of like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm totally cool. But then it would come out in these weird ways where he would, he would make judgmental statements. Hmm. And I'm just kind of like, okay, where the hell did that come from? Right. Versus my current partner, Nick, like when, I would talk about something, he would just be curious. He would inquire like, oh, what do you mean by that? Or like, oh, what does that entail? And so it was coming from a place of non-judgment and just curiosity. And then also me saying like, hey, if any of this makes you uncomfortable, like, let me know and we can either talk about it or take some space between it. And that's how Nick communicated with me compared to Chef Nick he'd be like, oh yeah, I'm cool, cool, cool. And then he would say all these like random judgmental things like, oh, well, if you're poly, does that even mean that you can actually love someone truly? And I was just like, whoa, like where did, you know, like these weird comments would really come out. And so, you know, I obviously was like, you know what, I'm not dealing with this bullshit. Like, (laughs) and so broke up with him and Nick and I, spent more time together and we were still 
open for the most part at the beginning. And then there was a time in our conversations and I had been open about what I do. He met a lot of, you know, my business partner at the time. He met my sub. And I always kept saying to him, like, if you have any questions, let me know. And he was always, he came to the relationship very curious about the things he didn't know about, which were a lot. And didn't come at it in a judgmental place, which I really much appreciated. But I was also very cautious about because I had already been down that road where people were like, yeah, I'm totally fine. And then something clicks later on. And then I'm like, okay, you're actually not fine. Mm -hmm. So I was a little still cautious because I was like, I've. I've heard this before. Are you truly okay with everything? But just time and time and again, every moment of conversation, anything that could have been upsetting, he came to the situation curious and open to learning Mm. and not judgmental. And like all those little moments were moments that like solidified our foundation even more. To the point where we decided that we didn't want to date other people so that we could really build our foundation. And just like the time and energy between work and everything else, like I just didn't have the time and energy to date other people anyways. And I really wanted to focus on building my foundation with him. And so it just kind of grew from that. So everything that Lucy was talking about for me because there's so many new elements to a relationship for me to understand the process, the curiosity where the communication that was, was paramount for this to work was something that was embedded into our relationship early on. And I think is from my experience before that, like looking back, I don't think I had necessarily great communication with other partners. So this was something entirely different where, being so communicative, being so open, being curious without judgment and just having these conversations is something that we we still hold close to us in terms of like a cornerstone of our relationship. And I think having that and having that open mind really led us down this, this beautiful path of a few, a few years later. And that's not something necessarily I had in other relationships in, in terms of being so open, being so communicative, just putting everything out there, asking questions, asking how we feel and things like that. So it was really, it was really amazing for me to be a part of that and just to experience things and to learn about things. And then it's, it's, it's worked. (laughs) It's, it's strange because I was at such a point where I wasn't too concerned going in. Really, it was meeting interesting people with unique perspectives that we could possibly connect with. Is that a relationship? Is that a friendship? Is that, something that's, you know, a non-traditional type of really like there's, there's all these kind of possibilities there. So I was so open where there was no concern of trying to get to an end result. Right. And then in terms of Lucy and what she does and any of that stuff or dating other people, I think at any other point in my life when I was younger, maybe there might've been some sort of like young jealousy or not fully understanding and not asking the right questions. And at this point in my life, it felt like none of that was there. You know, I, I am not a jealous person and I was so open to exploring this where like none of that stuff really came in. And obviously like being so open, it's like, well, if our paths got to a point where we both decided that we wanted to date other people and maybe minimize our relationship, like, I had to be open to that because I kind of signed up to to that early on. So being just so open to all those endless possibilities really didn't make me extremely cautious. Did I truly love Lucy's company? And did I want to lose that? I didn't want to lose that at all, but I was, I was surely open to having that very fruitful and open conversation to seeing where this would lead. And if anything, I, I would always imagine Lucy being in my life as a friend, as an acquaintance, and I had to be okay with, with that as being a, a possibility as a result as well. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think from my perspective too, like thinking about our relationship and in general, like the idea of dating a sex worker, right? Cause I get this question a lot and I think in private company, if we're at a party or whatever, or, or with mixed company, people who are sex workers and those who aren't, And even just like my own sex work friends who have seen our relationship and see how solid it is, they kind of, they ask, right? They'll be like, like, how do you have a relationship like that? Because it is difficult to 
be a sex worker and date. It is mm. immensely difficult. I'm not going to lie that and say that it's easy. It is not fucking easy. It is one of the challenges of being a sex worker. It is definitely one of the challenges. And so I do have a lot of sex work friends who are like, how do you have this great relationship? You know, because Nick is involved in a, you know, he's my number one cheerleader. He really is in what I do. And I'm so grateful and lucky because I feel a good portion of that is luck. Like we work on our relationship, like all relationships require work Mm -hmm. that goes beyond what either of us do as a job, like just two people coming together, there's going to be shit, you know, Mm -hmm. and you just work on it together. But what I feel I'm very lucky And this really comes down to luck is that I met someone who was at a place in his life to be open and curious about what I do and not judgmental about it and willing to learn. And also someone who is open minded, you know? And so I'm lucky that I happened to meet that person in a time in my life when I was ready to let that in as well. Because I definitely am was a type of person to be like, kind of keep everyone, you know, a little, you know, kind of like one foot out the door, because I'm like, you know what, I'm going to end this before I get hurt, you know, Mm -hmm. before this just like starts to really hit the fan. And I'm very self sufficient. So I was like, I don't fucking need anyone, you know. (laughs) And I was in a really good place of the work I've done on myself. And so I wasn't looking for a relationship in this capacity, but it came about because both of us were in that place. And it's hard to say like exactly what makes that happen because there's so much that has to happen. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be in a good place with yourself Mm -hmm. and the other person has to be in a good place with themselves Mm -hmm. to tackle any insecurities, communication problems, whatever. And relationships shouldn't take, especially at the beginning. And I really believe this, like it shouldn't be that hard because the rest of the time, you're going to have some challenging shit. But like, if you're at the beginning and you're just like butting heads and you're just building resentment already, it's just not worth it. Nick and I's relationship, even now, we're like almost five years in. We have our challenges, but our fighting is fighting for solutions and it's based in love and care. We prioritize our relationship. We go on date night once a week, twice a week sometimes. Mm -hmm. We do the things that you should do in any relationship, Mm -hmm. whether you're a sex worker or not. We both have busy schedules and I make it a priority to like spend time with him even when my schedule is crazy and he does that vice versa. We talk about things in our lives. We try to do things together. We plan stuff together. Like, And that, I think, that has nothing to do with like what I do too. Mm-hmm. Nick, I'm curious about kind of, uh, you, it seems like you came in and approached it with curiosity. And I'm wondering if there were any moments of surprise, moments of surprise Still. where actually something bothered you that you didn't expect it to about the, and then moments where you were, where it felt amazing and exciting and interesting in a way that you didn't expect it to. So I don't know if you were surprised about your reaction to anything as your relationship progressed. Real early on, I was amazed and surprised that she wanted to spend so much time with me. There was a moment where she went to travel and she asked me to um, to contact her. She was away, and I, I really didn't because I didn't want to be like totally in your face <laughs> or like too much or inundate you with messages. I wanted to give you a lot of space, and like we were both figuring it out. Uh, and that was the first time is really understanding that she will clearly communicate what she needs. And I have to show if I'm in this um, reciprocation and like vice versa. And that was, um, it was a big moment in our relationship of like, she really understood that I was, I was really into this and exploring this relationship. And that was like the big first surprise in terms of our relationship, in terms of what Lucy does, you know, I'm still, there's still a lot of funny, shocking surprise moments. <laughs> and I think early on, like I said, I was really, really open, but Lucy was really great at communicating 
and making sure I was okay with the depths and how far she would like relay specific things and specific t- uh, parts of her job. And to this day, it's, um, I feel like I've obviously become a lot more comfortable and confident, not that I really wasn't upfront, but just knowing and talking to her and just understanding the nuances of her day, and finding the humor in it, finding so many people that are connected to Lucy in this world. It's just been amazing to hear all their perspectives and, and their stories as well. There's certain certain things and certain boundaries, and Lucy knows this too, in terms of like certain actions and, and certain things that happen where there's like, it's not that it makes me sad or upset or whatever. It's just, it just makes me feel uncomfortable. And we have these clear boundaries set. And if I feel differently or whatever else, we clearly communicate those. And some of this is like trial and error, you know, like I'll talk about some aspects of my job or like activities, right? Or if I took some content and photo, which can be, you know, as a conscious status, it can be kind of extreme. And I'll ask him if he wants to see it, you know, of course, like consent from my clients where they know it's already going to be made public. And sometimes he's like, no, I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Or I'll look through my fingers or something be like, I think so. Nope, nope, maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) And that's okay, you know, and I think, I think it's very similar of like, I have friends who are actors, right? Does their partner necessarily want to watch them on the screen doing a love scene? Maybe not, you know, so maybe that's not the part of the show or the movie they want to see. And so, you know, you don't always know everything of where someone's going to be comfortable. And so him and I will talk a lot about like, hey, I did this today. And he'll be like, I'm so happy for you, babe. I was like, do you want to see it? He's like, no, I'm good. (laughs) But sometimes it's hard. Like Lucy will have a big smile on her face and she's just so happy. I'm like, okay, show me. (laughs) uh, There's a lot of communication around it. And I think a lot of times it has to do with gross factor. Like you get grossed out really, really quickly. And I don't. And I'm just like, I don't really get grossed out. And so he's just like, no, that sounds gross. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) What are the boundaries based on? Right? Is it is it the ick factor because you're getting into some like dark icky stuff and you're just like oh i can't handle that or is it more of an emotional stuff like what is yeah what are where like where are the the edges it's more of the ick factors like lucy and i have gross and pain yeah yeah. you don't like it when like when someone really is feeling pain you're just like no no that sounds like it hurts so bad (laughs) it it really doesn't have to do with the bond she forms with her with their subs or any of that, like I know that those relationships are very special to both parties and I'm super confident in what we have. So nothing of that nature. I'm ever, I like, I'm always open to hear about it or listen about it or understand it. Um, It's more about that ick kind of gross out factors. Um, That's where, that's where some of those boundaries lie. Yeah. Luckily it's not been emotional. It's really, and I think that has to do it definitely has to do with him being in a certain place and working on himself and all of that and then i think babe i think you're naturally someone who's not a jealous person nick in his young 20s would would beg to differ but yeah i'm not like that right now yeah yeah and then i think it also helps that i'm so transparent about Mm -hmm. stuff and so i think being very clear in your communication like really helps on the other side Because I know that what I do can be very hard for people emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I'm not unaware of that. And I don't expect people who are not sex workers to just get it right away. That I just think that's not really realistic. And so I never was like, well, you should get it and be fine with it, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. No, I knew that, you know, some of this stuff was sensitive. And Mm -hmm. so... I always took care in being like, okay, so if there's any aspects that you want me to talk about, if there's something that you don't want me to talk about, if you want me to clarify, like I'm here to always kind of talk to you about it and stuff. And so I've always made the effort to like keep those communication lines open, to talk about it very gently, to understand where the other person is coming from, if it definitely presses on an insecurity. And I think that helps with you, like when we've talked about it, like you are more comfortable because I'm transparent. 
No, absolutely. And when I talk about like young 20s, Nick, it was, I was in some relationships where they weren't very forthcoming with their actions and what they were doing outside of our relationship. Whereas never felt that way with Lucy. It was, there's never any sort of nebulous kind of like, what is she doing or confusion? It was very clear. Uh, we had a lot of discussions and she left a very kind of open forum for me to ask questions and understand it more fully. And if I had questions that came up, like I felt like very, very comfortable asking those questions too. So having that clarity just <laughs> drives all the jealousy away of like, I know where I stand with her. I know everything that she's up to. And yeah, it was never really jealousy. I mean, interesting enough, I actually have more jealousy issues than he does in this relationship. And it's something that it's something that has nothing to do with him. It has to do with my own past because I've been in relationships thinking that or, you know, agreeing, both agreeing that they were monogamous relationships and unfortunately being cheated on and deceived and things like that. And so I have a past of dis a lot of distrust and I have a lot of trust issues that I've continued to work on over the years and was clear with him that like, here are some of the areas I work on and that are hard for me. And so in our relationships, that stuff has been triggered for various reasons and not because of him specifically, but things that feel similar, right? And sometimes unknowingly on his part where I try not to blame him for it because it is not his fault, but just make him aware of like why I did get triggered on this and why I'm feeling really jealous and feeling and I just bring it up with him. So actually, most of the jealousy issues we've ever had has actually been on my part and not on his part. Yeah, and babe, you being so open about it really helps me understand what I can do as a better partner to like help mitigate that, help have my actions make her feel more comfortable and confident that you know those things don't come up and those she's not triggered in that way. So, can I ask how does how does what Lucy does impact, if at all, your sex lives, right? I'm sure you get asked this often. And especially for you, Nick, coming in, and I'm throwing air quotes here, coming in from the cold, right? Mm -hmm. Not really being in the sex positive world and not really being poly. I don't know if you had kinky sort of tendencies before you met Lucy. How does all of this impact the relationship and also like your sex lives? And Nick, your sexual exploration. Yeah, I mean, I think early in our relationship, I think Lucy, you call me like sex, sex light or a kink light, I mean. So, like, I've had kind of like um, an open mind to that, really, like, was open to exploration and seeing what was out there. So, I think all that stuff fascinated me. And I think, you know, when she wrote my Tinder profile too, I was unconventionally con conventional. So, like, I'm a normie on the outside, but there is a little kinky, kinky monster underneath. So I think, if anything, I think it's, uh, I find it actually really kind of uh, something that connects us. I think it's, it's sexy. I, I think her being, uh, being a dom and kind of owning that space and the story she tells and the pictures I see, just all those things, I think, kind of light that fire even more. And I, I, do, I do love that side of her. And I think sexually, it brings me closer to her. Yeah, I think it's interesting, though, like, and I've talked about this, but my sexuality is very based in power dynamics and in kink. Like I would say I'm very much actually on the ace, you know, spectrum. And that's something that was also very hard for me kind of trying to figure out in my whole life, just as a person and with general expectations of how you're supposed to be in relationships or be while you're dating, like my interest level wasn't in conventional sexual interactions. And I just always thought I was kind of like off, right? And then it actually didn't get better being a sex worker. It actually became even more difficult because I was in these hyper sex positive spaces, which was great, but it also felt like there wasn't room for people who were more like asexual or demisexual. And that conversation was something that was happening. And so I didn't 
I was just kind of like, I'd go to like these sex parties and I'd go all to these events and because I wanted to hang out with my friends and I'm also like a curious person and a total like voyeuristic pervert, but I didn't want to participate and I didn't want to like do all those things. And I have, I've tried it all because I was like, you know, like maybe this will do it. Maybe this. And over the years, it's been a journey that BDSM has actually really helped me because BDSM is not so focused on the orgasm, right? Like a big part of BDSM is actually denial and the beauty of denial and the beauty of the tease and beauty of that. And it took me a really long time to wrap my head and a lot of conversations with different people, a lot of my own research. And in our relationship, I said this to him at the beginning where I said, I don't really have a, you know, a very large high sex drive. I want to be clear that like me not wanting to have like penetrative sex, like I'm not a big fan of penetrative sex. If this is something you really need, you know, we can talk about solutions, but like, this is not something that I'm able to give. And I was still kind of determining that I told him at the beginning in this very like vague way, because I was still trying to figure out what sex, you know, in the traditional like sense looked like to me. It was very common in my interactions where I thought I was just getting bored of the relationship. And I would always ask myself, like, why don't I want these things? You know, why don't I interact the same way? You know, why don't I have like a higher sex drive? But, you know, and I realized like, because my sex drive has nothing to do with penetration or orgasm. It's very cerebral. It has to do with power and kink, really, like just doing weird ass shit. (laughs) (laughs) And so, so in our relationship, it was very much, I felt a lot more comfortable because I started off the relationship being really clear about that. And then as we progressed, you know, there was more conversations around that and more conversations about like, do you need something more? We can talk about other solutions and stuff and like actually not feeling pressured that I used to feel in other interactions that I had to perform and be a certain way that just was not me. And so it's allowed me to feel more comfortable in the fact that I am on like the A spectrum and that I show my affection and love in a very different way because Nick and I are very affectionate individuals, but for us, we interact almost like, for me, I think I interact with him very much like my inner child, which is what I need because that's the, that's the area that has to be healed for me. And so that is the form of interaction I prefer. That's my type of intimacy is like that very like childlike, playful curiosity interaction. That is very not, I guess, in a lot of a way, adult. <laughs> But that's not what I'm interested in either. So I get to have this adult world within my kink and BDSM, which is very satisfying for me. I don't necessarily need that in my private life in that way. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that because I do think that that's a different perspective than what people would, would imagine would assume going into it. One last question, and then we'll wrap to get you done. Um, so Nick, unlike Chef Nick, who came in with lots of judgment, seems like like you really balanced that well. How have you managed any judgment from family or friends? Uh, that's a great question. My close friends know what Lucy does. Um, and for the, those limited few, they're really seemingly has no judgment. Um, once you kind of start to expand that, I think there's some individuals that are like, I don't know what to say kind of thing. And they feel a little weird. So they just kind of like avoid it. So there's that. But then there's also there's family and friends who really don't like the fact that Lucy's a sex worker and have made their have been vocal about it. And to them, it's, you know, I'm at a point in my life where my friends, my family, everything is chosen and all the toxicity I have really tried to throw to the wayside. And so I'm okay with if you don't accept my partner, our relationship might not be where you want it. And I'm fine with kind of moving on without some individuals. 
as long as they're open and willing to kind of to hear myself and my my world, my relationship, then they're they're more than welcome to 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 continue being a part of it. But if there's a lot of judgment there, then I'm quick to kind of just go past that. <laughs> Well, thank you. Much appreciation. I don't know if there's anything else that you'd want to say or name before we close. I guess I'll say one thing. Dating a sex worker is honestly no different than dating anybody else with a complex job. I have a lot of friends who are not in the industry and they deal with the same exact problems. There are always going to be very similar problems because in the end, at the end of the day, No matter what someone does, it comes down to two people who choose to either care for each other or not, who choose to try to understand each other and try to put in the energy and work to be there for each other. So all the other stuff don't really matter. And if it does matter, then that should tell you a lot about yourself and whether you should even be in that relationship. Want more of Mistress Lucy? First, check out our interview with her on episode 87 about the role of daddy and kink. You can find Mistress Lucy Sweetkill on Instagram at lucy.sweetkill and Twitter at Lucy Sweetkill. You can also connect with her on Night Flirt and OnlyFans and by going to her website, lucysweetkill.com. If you have a story about sex work and relationships or questions from this episode, let us know. Head to the Facebook group and find other listeners and curious foxes. And to keep up with upcoming episodes or share your curiosities about topics, first make sure that you are following this podcast and that you're liking it so that we can arrive on your phone every single week. And then go to Instagram. That's where we have sneak peeks. We have bits of audio. We have questions. And you will be the first to know what's going on. But if you want to be the first to hear our episodes, then you're going to have to go to Patreon. If you go to We Are Curious Foxes on Patreon, then you're going to be able to access episodes before anybody else, access mini episodes, extras, and videos from our educator-led workshops. Finally, you can reach out to us by email and phone at listening at wearecuriousfoxes.com, or you can call us at 201-870-0063. This episode is produced and edited by Nina Pollock, who's the invisible hero of our story every week. Our intro music is composed by Dev Saha. We are so grateful for their work, and we're grateful to you for listening. As always, stay curious, friends. Take it away. Ms. Misla at Lucy dot C. It's hard. It's hard. It's a. It's a. It is hard. This podcast. Da, 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 da. Curious Fox podcast is not and will never be the final word on any topic. We solely aim to encourage curiosity and provide a space for exploration through connection and story. We encourage you to listen with an open and curious mind, and we we'll look forward to your feedback. Stay curious, friends. Stay curious. 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 Stay curious.